Well, in the old days, basketball teams were known as fives for the five starting players. And in society that was segregated, the game of basketball was also segregated. So they were called black fives, colored fives, negro fives. And we felt that the name black fives resonated, was true to the history, but also resonated today. The New York Historical Society has a history of working on civil rights exhibitions. And this was a case in which 50-year history had essentially been completely forgotten. Well, the Black Fives era spans from 1904, which is when basketball was introduced to African Americans for the first time in Washington, D.C., and it goes all the way through 1950, which is when the NBA became racially integrated. People don't understand history. They think it's just one general progression, and there are no little side trips. Sometimes the side trips are more important than this general progression. And in the case of the Black Fives and the importance of sports, and civil rights and how these things became combined, it's extraordinarily important. Major League Baseball became racially integrated in 1947 with Jackie Robinson, but actually black teams and white teams in basketball were playing each other even before 1910. And they played each other through the 1910s, 20s, 30s, and 40s. So this idea of racial integration actually started and was pioneered in basketball before it ever got to baseball. The reason that I was able to come in and find all these items on eBay or elsewhere was really partly because nobody else was interested in creating this type of a collection. We also do the history of fashion at the New York Historical Society, so we were delighted when fashion became part of the Black Fives exhibition, and there are extraordinary hipster, aka Brooklyn sneakers that were from 1910 that are in the exhibition. Amateur teams gave way to semi-pro teams, and then eventually the professional business model took over with full year guaranteed contracts for players. And the innovator of that was a man named Robert Bob Douglas, who was the owner of the New York Rens. And the Rens went on throughout the late 20s and 30s and even into the 40s to be the dominant basketball team. One of the things that I find most extraordinary was that there was a 10-year period of national basketball championships prior to the founding of the NBA. And in that 10-year period, three black teams won the championship, and no one knows. This world championship of professional basketball made everyone realize that black basketball talent was not only great, but here to stay.